In this video, we're going to talk about how a thermostat works, um, what's happening, what do the terminals stand for, and so each terminal powers a different function on the furnace or the furnace control board actually. So we're going to learn what that's about. So at your furnace, you're going to have 120 volts coming into it. The furnace requires 120 volts because you've got a blower motor. You've got certain components, a blower motor, sometimes your hot surface ignition or whatever it is using as ignition, um, your combustion motor assembly, all those things take 120 volts. Where your control circuit, like your thermostat and your, your limit switches and stuff like that, they don't necessarily take uh, 120 volts. So we use, well the manufacturers use a transformer inside of the furnace to step down the voltage. So that's all a transformer does. You put 120 volts into it, you get 24 volts out. And like I said, I'm not going to get super technical because you just don't need to know that stuff. If you want to learn more, you can look it up. But for getting out, you know, van ready and being prepared for this, you just don't need to know. It, and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So you can still diagnose everything without knowing the internal workings of a transformer. So, but what a transformer does, you put 120 volts into it, you get 24 volts out. A 24 volt wire and a common. And at the furnace control board, you've got the terminals we just talked about, your R, G, Y, W, C. And here, up here at your thermostat, you got those same terminals. So what's happening is it may not go directly to R and C, this 24 volts. It may be internally, like wired in on the uh, control board itself, soldered in through the connections on the back. But ultimately, what's happening is 24 volts is going to R and common is going to C. So you can always, if, for as long as your furnace has power and this transformer is powered up, you can check between R and C with a voltmeter and you should read 24 volts. If you didn't have 120 volt power or if your transformer is bad or sometimes they'll put a fuse, a fuse in here. Just in case there's a short, it'll blow the fuse instead of blowing the transformer. But bottom line is if everything is right and everything is good, you're going to read 24 volts. So this is basically what's happening in a furnace. You apply 120 volts, it's going to hit the transformer for your low voltage controls. Um, and it's also, they'll, this 120 volts will also split off and go to power your, your um, you know, normally it goes to the board and from the board it's going to power the transformer. That way the board has the 120 volts to control the, the motors and the ignition sequence or the ignition, the igniter. So, but if you're just, we're just trying to keep it simple here. So in order to keep it simple for your control wiring, this is what's going on. Now R, we always use R because it's 24 volts coming from the transformer. We always call that our 24 volts. Do you have your 24 volts on R? Uh, you know, that's what I would ask you. So um, G, so R, just think of it as power. It's power to your thermostat. Or it's a distributor of power at your thermostat. G, we always use G to control the fan. That's what the thermostat's laid out to do. So G is the fan. So you basically we've already wired this in on the last video so you know where those go really easy as long as you keep them the same color between all of them then you're good so g is for a fan it's a call for fan y is a call for cooling w is a call for heat and C is common so you need to know what these terminals do so R is your is your power your 24 volts um, G is your fan that's the switch for the fan um, Y is for cooling W is for heat and C is common so what is happening within a thermostat is you have R up here 
Think of it as it's got this big arm that's hanging out over all, all these terminals. And depending on what you switch the thermostat to, let's say you switch it to heat. You switch it to heat, well now it's active in heat, well then you got to turn it up. So then once you turn it up on a digital thermostat, you'll hear a click. Well, as soon as that click makes, it's just the relay inside the thermostat that is basically taking R and putting power to W. And then the control board does its thing from there. It, it starts the sequence of operation for the heat mode. Um, if you if you have a you turn your fan switch, so thermostats have an on and an auto for the fan, and then for the settings, you know you have heat off and cool for just a one stage heat, one stage cool. So let's say you turn the fan to on. All it's doing is taking this R and it goes click and powers up G. Then from there, that power comes down to the control board and the control board tells it what to do based on the commands from the thermostat. If you have a call for Y, for cooling, R, when you flip it to cooling, then you turn the thermostat down. Once it makes the switch to tell the system to come on, it just powers up Y. So you can see it's just a, it just distributes the power between whatever action you're giving it. It depends on what you have it set at, depending on what, it, what the thermostat tells the wires to do. And all it's doing is distributing power, and then that sends it back to the furnace, and the control board knows what to do from there. So that's just basic. Um, now, when it comes to G... Y and G, with a call for cooling, they're the same terminal. <clears throat> so as soon as Y gets power, G gets powered as well. <coughs> they're the same terminal within the thermostat. And they'll separate with a call for on um, at the fan terminal. So you, fl you flip the fan to on, it's going to separate those two. That way the air conditioner doesn't come on at the same time. But when you flip it in auto... G and Y are the same, and then the thermostat, with a call for cooling, will bring on Y, and Y and G are tied together, so they actually bring, they both come on at the same time. So that covers pretty much everything on a one-stage heat, one-stage cool thermostat, and gives you an idea of what's happening within the thermostat. This is very helpful to know and understand, so I suggest you watch this video, video several times until you get it, because this will help us diagnose and know what to look for on our meter readings. So that's it for thermostats and we'll move on.